Let me begin by talking about bacterial pathogenesis. Of course, pathogenesis refers to the process by which a disease is being caused. And when it comes to bacteria, pathogenicity refers to the ability of that particular bacteria to cause disease. Now, there's a range in this uh, sometimes, and we'll look at that later. But an obvious question is, are all bacteria pathogenic, uh, at least to humans? And of course, you know the answer to this, and that's no, because we're surrounded by bacteria that are not pathogenic. And the clear example of that is the normal bacterial flora uh, that resides within our bodies. So microorganisms uh, colonize, uh, microorganisms that colonize, but they don't cause disease, are known as normal uh, bacterial flora. And of course, they have to be under the normal uh, condition, as we'll see later on. Now we have a substantial amount of normal flora residing within the body, mostly in the gut, but in uh, many other locations. And in fact, if you were to count every single bacterial cell, and then you would count every single cell of the body, then you would find that the number of bacterial cells will be tenfold uh, higher than the number of all the uh, human cells within the body. So really the bacteria outnumber us in terms of the cells, but they're just smaller, so they occupy smaller space. Now the common locations within the body that the bacteria are found as part of the normal flora are skin, nose, uh, mouth, vagina, and gut. Gut by far is the major place where you would find uh, normal flora. And not only that, but that particular flora within the gut is absolutely criti critical uh, to normal health and well-being. Uh, when it comes to gut flora, there are several benefits, and we're beginning to just scratch the surface nowadays uh, about the benefits and the complexity of these uh, bacterial uh, ecosystem. Uh, this uh, ecosystem contains more than 500 species of bacteria, and we still have not identified all of them. The, uh, these bacteria are not causing disease when they're just residing in, in those locations under normal circumstances. In fact, they protect us from the pathogenic bacteria because they will outnumber a pathogenic bacteria. So the pathogenic bacteria that enters the system will have a really difficult time competing against the bacteria that are already used to living in this environment and can thrive better than an outside invader. So that's one way to protect the host. The other way in which they protect the host from pathogens is that these bacteria that are part of the normal flora uh, produce substances that we recognize as bacteriocenes. Okay, so these are toxins produced by the normal flora. We call them toxins because they're toxic to the other invading bacteria. They're not toxic to the host. So there's a little warfare going on inside the gut, and that warfare is good for us because this normal flora will fight off pathogenic strains and will protect us. Now, uh, there's always a possibility that you can wipe out your normal flora so that competition goes down and in that case uh, the pathogenic invaders will begin to take hold and that's what we'll talk about uh, pretty soon but keep that in mind the other major function that we're just beginning to understand when it comes to the gut flora is that it stimulates and trains our immune system when we're born our immune system is pretty naive and it doesn't really understand uh, what's friendly and what's uh, not friendly and this uh, bacteria actually help train our immune system. And it turns out that uh, that helps us, uh, protects us from uh, certain autoimmune diseases. And there has been a lot of research uh, suggesting that if we don't have the right flora from birth, uh, and if that ecosystem is skewed in any way, then that creates a potential for autoimmune disorders later on. Another uh, advantage is that the bacterial flora uh, has nutritional benefits. It digests the fiber because we're not able to digest things like cellulose. Uh, but the bacterial flora can digest that and give us some nutritional uh, calories from that. The 
Bacterial flora in the gut can also produce a significant amount of uh, vitamin K, uh, K uh, and also uh, vitamin B12. Now there's also a recent link between the bacterial flora and obesity and other diseases. So if you have uh, a normal flora that's not uh, balanced, then it actually has an effect on the body metabolism and that increases the risk of obesity and other related diseases. So the metabolism of our body is also trained by the normal flora. So that's a very important function that we're just beginning to understand. So that said, and I already mentioned that the normal flora within the gut has over 500 species. So you can't replenish that very easily. So in some cases, there have been efforts to actually uh, do fecal transplant. So you have things like recurring colitis, where you have a C. diff infection that's really difficult to treat. It goes away, it comes back, and antibiotics stop working. And in those patients, the only thing that has worked is fecal transplant, where you take uh, fecal matter from uh, another human being, and you transplant that into this patient's gut. And that actually replenishes the the, the ecosystem that's needed to fight off the Clostridium difficile. So that has worked in many cases. There's some research that suggests that fecal transplants can also be used uh, for treatment of obesity, insulin resistance, and for treatment of autoimmune diseases. So as I said again uh, repeatedly, we're just beginning to scratch the surface in terms of the utility of the normal flora that is residing within the gut and it's again uh, can't emphasize enough it's a very complex ecosystem containing more than 500 species so it's not easy to figure out exactly what makeup do we need in terms of the species and have that targeted delivery so that's why we have to resort to fecal transplants but at some point we'll have enough research to tell us that okay, this patient is lacking these, these, and these strains, and so we need to just add those, and we don't need to do fecal transplants. But that could be far away. So with that perspective, here's something that, as a pharmacist, you'll be exposed a lot, and that is probiotics. So we have probiotics everywhere. We get probiotics uh, in terms of yogurt. Uh, we have probiotic pills. You can get probiotic-containing uh, orange juice. You can get probiotic-containing ice creams. So uh, how useful these are? Well, until now you would be thinking, okay, so you got probiotics. These are live cultured uh, bacteria. Uh, these are 100 million organisms in this one pill. So this must be a lot. Well, as I said, there are over 500 uh, species in the gut. And these types of probiotic supplements typically contain one to five uh, different uh, species so clearly they're better than nothing but they're not going to restore um, an imbalance that might be caused by uh, using antibiotics frequently so that's just something uh, that's food for thought okay so I've uh, raved about the benefits of normal flora but uh, there's always potential harm uh, with anything else in life so Normal flora is normal if it stays in that location. And it's also normal as long as it's a normal individual. If one thing changes, then that normal flora has the potential to cause harm. So an example would be, what if uh, that flora within the gut escapes out and invades the bladder uh, through the urethra? Here, for example, E. coli is probably the most common species that causes bladder infection. E. coli also happens to be uh, one of the major uh, species within the gut. So it, outside of the gut, it can actually cause uh, an infection. And so bladder infection is a fairly common type of infection. Uh, also, what if somebody gets uh, injured? So if they're wounded in any way, now the normal flora, which is on the skin, can actually enter uh, the tissue and can cause an infection. Uh, another example is if you go in for a regular dental cleaning, the normal flora is within the mouth, it has not entered the bloodstream, so it's fine, 
but after the, the dental work there's a little bit of bleeding and it has entered the bloodstream now it can uh, it has the potential to do some harm so these are situations where the flora is the same species but it just escapes its normal location and invades another region and now it uh, has the potential uh, to cause a disease so it's a non-pathogenic bacteria that becomes pathogenic given it's in the wrong place now you can also have a situation uh, where you have a patient who's immune compromised I told you earlier on that one advantage of the normal flora is that it trains our immune system and helps our immune system decide who's the enemy and who's the friend so that our immune system functions normally now the immune system keeps an arm distance with this normal flora the normal flora stays normal and is well behaved as long as our immune system is strong because it prevents this normal flora from overgrowing and from beginning to invade other regions but if you take a patient who has a compromised immune system so if you have an HIV patient or you have a patient who's undergoing chemotherapy or you have a transplant patient who's taking immunosuppressants these types of patients have a an immune system that's uh, compromised or weakened significantly so in these patients even the normal flora can occasionally cause diseases so the two points in this slide is if the flora is in the wrong location or in the wrong patient it has the potential to cause a harm or infection so that uh, leads to our summary of talking about bacterial pathogenesis which we started with that pathogenesis again refers to the disease causing ability of a bacterial strain or species so that has to do with what well it has to do with what where and who so it depends on what organism we're talking about it depends on where that uh, species is uh, within the host and it depends on who the host is whether and the health status of the host so if you have c diff within the gut that's pathogenic if you have a normal uh, e coli strain within the gut that's fine but if it ends up in the peritoneum then it causes disease if you have a host who's immune compromised then even a normal bacterial flora will cause disease so that emphasizes the point when you talk about pathogenesis it's not all black and white it all depends on context depends on who the patient is depends on their immune status depends on the what specific bacterial strain we're dealing with and it also depends on what the location is within the body